Acts chapter 19, starting in verse 11. And when you get that, if you can, please stand. Amen. If you got it, say amen. amen. Still looking, say wait. Praise the Lord. Amen. 11th verse of the 19th chapter of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Holy Spirit. It reads, And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. Verse 14. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and a chief of the priests, which did so. Praise the Lord. This morning I want to use as a subject, speaking briefly to you on this, the seven sons of Sceva. Subtitle, A Picture of Today's Faithless Church. The Seven Sons of Sceva, A Picture of Today's Faithless Church. We want it now. We want it without delay. We want it with as least effort on our part as possible. We want God to bless us in spite of what we are doing that we know we should not be doing. So we're going to talk about faith. Somebody shout faith. Faith. Hey today. Let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're so thankful that you've blessed us, you've encouraged us, you've taught us, you've touched us, you've moved upon us. And Lord, I'm asking that you'll move upon our souls. I'm asking, Lord, that we will not have a weariness and a dreariness about us, but that we will lift up the name of Jesus Christ and we'll be able to shout hallelujah in spite of how we may feel right now. I'm asking that the word of God will go forth like rain and saturate and satiate our souls and bless us and encourage us. And Father, we're asking that we will open up and receive all that God has for us. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you by faith for moving that mountain or taking us over or through that mountain. And we say this, we declare this. By faith, we thank and we praise you, binding every spirit of hindrance in the name of Jesus, giving you all glory, all honor, and all praise. And it's in the holy name of Jesus Christ we ask. And the whole church said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, please be seated. Praise God. We live in a time where the Bible, the Word of God, is broadcast on a worldwide basis. We have such a plethora of, of, of the word that's available at our fingertips. You can get the word on the internet, you can get it on CDs, you can get it on DVDs, you can, you can get it in your local bookstore, you can find the word. There's a plethora of the word, an abundance of the word today. But the word of God is so very little read that it, it, it just boggles the mind as to why with all of the opportunities to read the Word that so very few actually spend time in the Word. When Cecilia and I married in 1979 and she gave her heart and life to Jesus shortly after that, we didn't have one Bible in our home. I had my small pocket Gideon's Bible that I carried and which we read from every night that I was at home. But we didn't have the Word of God in our home and, and we, we wanted, we knew we needed to have the Word so that we could read the Word and study the Word. And reading and studying the Word is a lifelong endeavor. It's not something that you just pick up and all of a sudden you are a theologian. You know everything about the Word of God. You have to invest yourself. In fact, sometimes you have to force yourself to read the Word of God. Because so many things are pulling at you. Or your favorite movie is now playing. At the time that you told God, you're going to read the Word of God. Somebody need to say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. Or that TV program comes on. Or, you know, it's the last game of the, of the seventh game of, of, of the world uh, NBA championship passing. I just, you know, I just got to. Something be pulling at you. 
to not read the Word of God. And we got our first Bible in the house, a King James Version New Testament. And we've been reading out of the King James Version ever since. I grew up reading those these and thou's. They're not strange to me. King James is the most accurate of the translations today. It is about 98 point something percent correct in accordance with the original translation. The reason it is not a hundred because hundred percent is because certain words you just can't translate off into English. They try to get as close as they can, but there are just certain words you can't translate. But just by having the, the Bible in your house is not doing you any good unless you read it. Because when I grew up, we had a family Bible that we recorded birthdays and anniversaries and births. And we would read the 23rd Psalm once a year, Christmas time mainly. Hallelujah. So just having the Word of God in your house is not enough. You've got to have the Word down inside of you. You see, God wants to give you a word for your situation, for your circumstance, for what you are facing right now. In the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Man, I tell you, every time I read that, I just, I just shout. I just shout about it. Because that lets me know that, that, that evolutionists are wrong. We didn't come from a monkey. We didn't come from an amoeba that crawled up on the beach. And somehow wiggle his way up a tree, hung down, and a tail grew. God created us. Praise the Lord. So you need the word that's down in you. And Paul was, was, was used by God, a man who persecuted the church. Aren't you glad God can turn your situation around? <laughs> if God couldn't change us, my Lord, he wouldn't be much of a God. But God can change us. No matter what your past may have looked like, God is looking at you right now. God can use you to be a blessing to somebody in spite of what you've done. Never think that you are at a point in your life or you've done something that is so horrible that God cannot use you if you will repent. God is in the forgiving business. He is willing and able to forgive and to cleanse and to start you on a road that you will realize that he's God all by himself and he's able to do great and mighty things. I don't know what it is, but I've been feeling a little hindrance ever since I came down here. I'm not saying it's coming from any of you. It might be coming from me. But I'm going to keep on because I've, I've found in the past that if you don't give up, God will pull you through. Just because you face some opposing uh, 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 forces, uh, just because things are not going like you're accustomed to, there's no reason to quit and give up. We're going to keep believing God, uh, and when, when, the God, when the Holy Spirit punches a hole into that opposition, I'm going to shout hallelujah, so that way you'll know he didn't did it. Praise the Lord. And Paul was used by God in a great way. I don't know about you, but I want God to use me to my fullest potential. If that is just to reach one more soul, then I'll be satisfied. I want to be used by God. In fact, I've made up in my mind that I'm going to allow God to use me. I don't care what others may think or say, God. I want you to use me. Look at somebody and say, use me, God. See, you're getting all pretty on me now. Hallelujah. And Paul, after his conversion, after God had changed his life, the Bible said that God used him to perform miracles. Miracles. God is still in the miracle working business today. In spite of what we're hearing and what we're seeing, God is still in the miracle working business. A few years ago, they had some unusual activity that occurred with, that was occurring with Mount Vesuvius. And they have all types of uh, gadgets and, and, and wickets that are down in this volcano that are measuring. If this volcano moves a, 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 a millimeter, they know it. If it burps, they know it. And so they were getting some.